It's gasoline, all right, with a pretty high ethanol content. Unless I'm wrong, the diethylene triamine is from an aftermarket stabilizer. Allows the fuel to be stored for longer without gumming up. a silyl terminated polyether and acrylic sealant. Call. The great Andrew must have been closing up some joints and gaps in his rehearsal space. Although, I'll tell you, if it were me, I'd have the landlord take care of that kind of work. And who's to say Andrew didn't? The blood sample we took from the generator is a match to a Lyle Fitzer. Jeez, kid's 18 years old. Look at that list of priors. Talk about starting early and often. But how does Lyle Fitzer know? Wait a second. Lyle's home address matches the Levesque address. Lyle Fitzer is Andrew's stepson. And at some point, he left blood at our crime scene. We should hear what he has to say about his stepfather. It's a paraffin. With those additives, it's consistent with lamp oil. That makes sense. From what I've read, lamp oil is the least toxic fuel for fire breathing. It's still toxic, just not as bad as the alternatives. Yeah? I'm gonna need to see some evidence before I go to a judge. We don't even know if there's been a crime yet, so there's no grounds for a warrant. But it won't hurt to ask him. I thank my mom. I wouldn't be here if she hadn't freaked out when I said I wasn't going. I'm sure it's a tough time for her, but we have to ask. We found your blood on a generator that may have caused your stepfather's death. How did it get there? A generator killed him? He didn't die of cancer? How did a generator kill him? Lyle, your mother said sometimes he would help Andrew practice his performance. But how would your blood get on the generator? I got in a fight at school, and I got suspended. Mom said I had to tell Andrew before the school called him. So, last night I went into his rehearsal room, and, and he didn't take it well. He liked to poke and push as punctuation. He'd yell, and then he'd poke, yell, then push. Last night he pushed me so hard I hit my head on the generator. Hurt like a... It hurt, okay? A lot. Pretty great guy, huh? What do you think? But he'd only hit me when he was bored with beating Mom. It must have been very tough for both of you. I'm curious, did you ever think about... Look, I did not kill my stepdad. 
Believe me, I had every reason to, but I can restrain myself. Not like him. <laughs> Whatever. I can go, right? Hi, Doc Robbins here. Just wanted to let you know that I've completed my autopsy of Andrew Levesque. I'll give you a full report when you come by. Carboxyhemoglobin saturation levels in your victim indicate that he was exposed to carbon monoxide in relation to ambient concentration of about 3,200 parts per million. Death would have occurred in about 30 minutes, but he would have experienced severe headaches, dizziness, and nausea after only five or 10. Who hangs around for half an hour feeling like that? Well, that's the other interesting wrinkle. While Mr. Levesque's exposure to carbon monoxide was at a lethal level, he was quite possibly already on his way out. Take a look here. His squamous cell carcinoma had spread to his lungs. It's like a friend of mine once remarked, his cancer had cancer. So he might not have felt much worse than he normally did, at least until he keeled over. Now it's even more important for us to finish our test with the generator. If it could have put out enough carbon monoxide, this might be just an accident. No, no mention of it at all. But Mr. Levesque's last visit to the doctor was over six months ago. So obviously his cancer went unchecked and progressed rather aggressively. Well, I'm not sure. Look at what I found in his esophagus. This is a two-part hard gelatin capsule. I couldn't decipher a label, but it could be a cancer-killing pill, or it could be a vitamin supplement. Liver's set, so I'd say he's been dead for approximately four to five hours. No problems at all. Here you are. I did. There's a white substance on his wrist that I left for you. You always did know how to make us feel needed. Also, take a close look at his mouth, the area just around his lesions. There were small concentrations of alkane hydrocarbons in his system, paraffin. Not enough to initiate toxemia, however. I think we've been fairly comprehensive, but if you think of more questions to ask me, I'll answer them if I can. We'll have to verify it, but that looks like makeup to me. That shade's a little dark for him. More white goo. But is it the same white goo we found before? Great. Now let's check the carbon monoxide level on the detector. 1,600 parts per million. The generator didn't put out carbon monoxide fast enough to have killed Andrew. At least not in his gigantic workspace. Particulate talc and nylon, silicone oil, sodium hyaluronate, and water. Definitely makeup. Andrew may have been hiding his cancer. The caulk on the victim's wrist and the caulk from the generator are chemically identical. 